Demandez-moi. Ce mari est mort. D'aller défier les dragons du néant. Guys, overview of Toulouse. Like I say, I try to string all the things together. You've all you've all seen Peter Pan, right? Yeah. You remember Tinkerbell with the magic fairy dust? Yeah. It's like somebody sprinkled magic fairy dust on this whole damn city 500 years ago. Compared to any other city you want in Europe, Toulouse has just had good fortune. It's only ever known wealth or extreme wealth. The four times in the last 500 years when it sucked to live in Toulouse for a decade, I can put them on one hand four times. The, 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 the Great Depression in the 30s, okay? The reconstruction after the, 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 the French Revolution and the Napoleonic stuff. The Huguenot riots in the 15th century. And, and if you want to go way back, fair enough, um, during the War of the Roses, between the Black Plague, 1347, and the Great Fire, 1463, you had a hundred years of something called the Little Ice Age. Have you ever, any of you heard of it? it? It sucked everywhere in Europe. You had a whole hundred years you could be born grow up and die and one crop in four was being harvested for a hundred years this famine that never went away but that sucked everywhere not just to lose to lose nowadays the extreme wealth of Airbus that brings to the city I'll talk about in a second 17th 18th century the extreme wealth the canal the mini brought to Toulouse more than the wealth Airbus brings to Toulouse nowadays. Greater than the wealth the Canal de Midi brought to Toulouse was the 15th and 16th century blue dye trade. Uh, yeah. let, let me give you some, let me just cut these up a little bit so you can see what I mean when I'm saying the city's just been lucky. Right now, my statistics for Airbus are from 2019, so they might be a little out of whack, but they won't be a lot out of whack. Toulouse. 2019, the only city in France not in debt. Anybody study economics? Every city in Europe is in debt. Modern city economics is debt management. Not only is Toulouse not in debt because of Airbus, they just finished building two underground metro lines. People don't build underground metros under modern cities. They build tramways. The reason is it costs something obscene, like a billion euro per kilometer to build an underground metro under a modern city. Toulouse has just finished two. Now they're building the third one. That's the wealth of Airbus. That's why there's clean streets. That's why there's always events going on. Greater than the wealth of Airbus was the 17th, 18th century Canal de Midi. And if you know what that is, it's just a canal goes from Toulouse to Narbonne on the Mediterranean, 110 kilometers. During its time, for the first 150 years after it was opened, the most important canal in the world. Do you remember how earlier I said the most evil place on planet Earth? And you're like in your head going, that can't really be true, the whole earth. That was the most evil place. The Canal de Midi, there's 10,000 canals. Some of them were unbelievably important. None of them were as important as the Canal de Midi. The Canal de Midi was an engineering solution to a 900 year planet scale problem. The problem, from the, the, the 11th century up until the Canal de Midi, one quarter of trade on planet Earth took place in the Mediterranean Basin. All the countries around the Mediterranean Basin. One quarter of all trade on planet Earth. The only way in and out of the Med Basin was through the Straits of Gibraltar. You can take goods over land, go for it. It costs you 10 times the price to transport the same goods over land than it does water. Any water, lake, river, ocean, you always want to use water. Two problems with the Straits of Gibraltar. Lesser problem, kept swapping hands between the British and the Spanish for 500 years. Whoever owned the rock, if they caught you using their strait, they imposed a toll. That was a lesser problem. The greater problem from the middle of Northern Africa all the way to the Atlantic coast. Forget about your pirates of the Caribbean and Jack Sparrow and all that nonsense. The pirates of the Barbary coast, professional state run piracy from the 11th century until the Napoleonic Wars in the 19th century. 
It didn't matter that the Mediterranean Basin was the most militarily patrolled waterway in the world by the British for 500 years. At the very least, they were losing one cargo ship out of 40 because you can't stop pirates. Doesn't matter which way you go through the straits, you gotta pass right in front of these pirate countries. They see a ship, they come out, they take it, they're gone before anybody can stop them. For centuries, 900 years was a problem. A lot of people looking for a solution. A lot of people looking at a map of Europe. A lot of people looking at the Garonne. Completely navigable from here to Bordeaux. If you could build a canal from here to Narbonne, you can backdoor the entire Mediterranean basin. Forget about the rock. Forget about the pirates. You can avoid it all. It was an engineering problem nobody had a solution to until a 17th century lesser noble salt tax collector, amateur engineer by the name of Pierre Paul Riquet cracked it. How to keep the canal? Toulouse is low, Narbonne is low, the middle of the canal by Carcassonne is high. How do you keep the high parts of the canal filled with water? He built a big wooden model like a toy. He could show how to use it and he petitioned for an audience with Louis XIV, the Sun King at Versailles. I don't know, I can't prove any of this, but I think I knew he, he knew exactly what he was doing. Louis XIV, if you read up about him, he's a very childlike figure. He loved his toys and he loved his waterworks. Have you seen Versailles? The fountains? That was all him. I think Riquet knew this when he showed up with essentially a big toy. Look at how the canal would be filled and stuff like this. Because when he left that meeting with Louis XIV, he had all the money he needed to build the canal. If you were one of the 200 merchant noble families living in Toulouse, watching this canal be built, and you were one of the ones that decided to mortgage your house to buy canal barges and river barges on the chance that it would work out well, when the canal opened, that decision would have been the same as buying into Bitcoin in year one. Every one of those families that did that got sick rich. The entire city changed overnight. Not one cargo taken by the Canal de Midi was ever lost to pirates. It was guaranteed delivery in and out of the Med Basin. This was always the port. It was the land port before the Canal de Midi opened. When it was the land port, 13 stevedores, the big bustly guys who load and unload ships, within one year of the Canal de Midi op opening, a 300 member stevedores guild with more political power in Toulouse than the Capitouls. Um, the, the, the only problem with the canal is it's a canal. You can throw all the ships you want through the Straits of Gibraltar. The canal was running at capacity from day one. The price to use it went up and up and up and up until within a year of its opening, only one cargo could afford to use it luxury goods. This little bullshit port <laughs> became the center of the world in Europe for luxury goods until the opening of the Suez Canal or the age of trains. I can't remember which came first. They knocked all the canals on the head. And the wealth the Canal de Midi brought to Toulouse for 150 years then was less than the wealth of the 15th, 16th century blue dye trade. I'm not gonna go into it. I think I made my point. My point was, this is a good place to live if you wanna get lucky. So I would always used to take you down here. You'd always, oh God, the toilets. If anybody needs the toilet, there's a public toilet in the wall over there. Uh, it's like a cocktail shaker from hell. I do not recommend it. <laughs> if you want a nice clean toilet, then you gotta go down there and buy a lollipop and they'll let you use their toilet. I really, if you don't have cash, I'll lend you the cash. If you go in that place, you won't come out the same person who went in. <laughs> um, so I used to, with you guys, I'd take you all down there. Beside some lady eating an ice cream that they just bought from there. And I would say, oh, I'd feign surprise. And I'd go, oh, did I tell you about the cafe? And without fault, they'd go, well, Pierre Paul Riquet, luxury goods, the Canal de Midi, yada, yada, yada. I'd go, yeah, 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 but not the cafe. Oh, what was the cafe? Cafe was a river morgue for 350 years. All the dead and bloated bodies they pulled out of the water were kept there. It goes twice as much in as it sticks out. They used to keep, keep the bodies on six tin pallets at the back, three vertically stacked on the left, three vertically stacked on the right. They drip river water on them to keep them cool, which make them swell. 
It was at the back of the morgue, the coldest place. Do you want to know where they keep the ice cream freezers now? No. So I love telling that story. And invariably, you get, you get everybody would turn around going, no, you're lying, that can't be true, and all of this stuff. But the thing is, the person I was driving slowly crazy is the guy who works there. Because he'd show me, he'd see me show up, I'd do my spiel for like 10 minutes, and every time he'd be like this. Because at one point, you know, 15 people would suddenly turn around and stare at him. And then you'd have a few people who would come over and ask him if it's true. And my favorite of all time was this one American lady. She looked at her ice cream, she looked at me, and she was like, you're lying. And she started walking over to the guy. And like, it's one of those moments in my life. I remember the guy looking at me like this. <laughs> and he's looking at the woman approaching and he's looking at me and she blocks him from view and a second later he leans into view like this <laughs> giving me the devil eyes will you stop telling that story I will never stop telling that story please feel free to go and ask them if I'm telling the truth anyway I'll take you this way sorry that was too long